equally at home in a Shakespearean doublet or a cowboy hat. Native Texan Barry Corbin has become the kind of actor who makes an impression on audiences no matter how large or how small the role. While he's a dynamic lead, Corbin has become the favored pinch hitter to whom directors turn when they need a performer who can set the stage with just one or two scenes. Born in La Mesa, Corbin began acting while a student at Texas Tech. Following a stint in the Marines, he was taking the stage on Broadway and around the country throughout the 60s. In plays as varied as Beckett, The Odd Couple, and The Merry Wives of Windsor, he moved to Los Angeles in the late 1970s to write plays for National Public Radio. But his movie career took off following his memorable portrayal of Uncle Bob in Urban Cowboy. Over the course of his extraordinary career, Corbin has played everything from con men to cowpokes and military men to millionaires. The 80s saw him stealing scenes in films like War Games as a general who doesn't believe in trusting computers to manage nuclear warfare and nothing in common as a no-nonsense airline tycoon who loves horses more than airplanes and of course in his unforgettable role as bumbling deputy Roscoe Brown in the acclaimed miniseries adaptation of Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove. And yes, Dallas fans, that was Corbin playing Sheriff Washburn the lawman who tangled with the Ewing clan many times over the run of the series. 1990 saw the premiere of Northern Exposure, which gave Corbin a plum role for five seasons as former astronaut Maurice J. Minifield, the real estate tycoon and entrepreneur who pretty much owns the entire town of Sicily, Alaska, but whose wealth can't mend the heartbreak of losing his fiance to his one-time best friend. The role brought Corbin international recognition as well as two well-deserved Emmy nominations. Maurice's irascible nature was clearly something both character and actor shared. Corbin wrote an open letter to CBS accusing them of harming Northern Exposure when they moved the show from Monday to Wednesday. And when Universal refused to pay to transport the show's cast and crew to the Emmys, Corbin and his daughter rode up to the ceremony on horseback. But as a real-life cowboy who got the acting bug as a child when he wanted to be Gabby Hayes, it's Corbin's roles as a good old boy, generally one who's smarter than the observers give him credit for, that stand out the most. In recent films like No Country for Old Men, In the Valley of Elah, and That Evening Sun, Corbin has dazzled audiences and critics alike with some of his richest work, all of which happened after his 65th birthday. In addition to his TV and film credits, Barry is also known and loved around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex as the distinctive countryfied voice of 99.5 The Wolf. And with a full plate of upcoming projects, plus being a regular cast member on the new TV series Anger Management, Corbin shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. Well, I wish I could be with you all tonight, but as you can see, I'm so far west. If I go any further, I'll get wet. I'd like to thank Jim and Gloria for including me in the Multicultural Cowboy Hall of Fame. I had the privilege last Saturday night of going to the 30th anniversary of the Bell Pickett uh, Memorial Rodeo. All the competitors were African American. Most of the audience was African-American, and uh, there was a sprinkling of Caucasians, me and about five others. But it was a pleasure to watch these kids and young people out there practicing with their ropes and riding their horses. It's good for your soul to watch that. And we need to be all-inclusive for, for our culture because... Back in the late 1800s and 1900s, early 1900s, the um, cow camp was the one place that the, Dr. Martin Luther King's dream of a man being judged by his character rather than the color of his skin was a reality. 
In the cow camp, there was no race. There was work. There was work. And if you did the work, you were included. Probably 25% of the cowboys in the late 1800s were black. Maybe 30% were Latin American. 10% were Indian. The rest were Caucasian. And they all came together and they all did the work. That's what we need to get back to today in our general society. And that's what rodeo is all about. That's what, uh, what the cowboy way is. So I want to thank you for being here and supporting this uh, worthy effort. And uh, in conclusion, I would like to uh, invite you to watch FX until... Uh, September, then watch Fox. Watch Anger Management, please. We need the money. <laughs> and don't judge me by the character I play, because it is a part, and I'm not politically correct. Y'all have a good dinner. <laughs>